Hey everyone, in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at building a very simple REST API using Node.js and MongoDB as our NoSQL database. Um, so as you can see on my screen, I do have a terminal up and running. This is my locally running instance of Mongo. Um, you can see how to do this in a previous tutorial that I recorded. Um, it was on the subject of MongoDB and Docker. Um, so this will be uh, around building an actual API around our database. Um, but before we get into the to, into the depth of our tutorial, I want to give a special shout out to DigitalOcean. Um, DigitalOcean is a sponsor of this particular video. Uh, I actually use DigitalOcean to host the Polyglot developer, and I have been for several years now. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with DigitalOcean, they offer a variety of services. They offer compute services, cu manage Kubernetes services, a whole variety of things that are, that are pretty awesome. Um, so if you want to get started with DigitalOcean, uh, I actually do have a promo code to share. You can actually go to do.co slash polyglot and you'll get $100 credit uh, towards the service. Um, so now diving into the core of the tutorial, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new directory and I'm going to navigate to my desktop and we're just going to go ahead and create a new project directly on the desktop. Um, so what I'm going to say is make directory and I'm going to call this Mongo API doesn't really matter what you call it. I'm going to navigate into that new project and I'm going to say npm init hyphen y. So I do have a new package.json file inside of that directory. That's all that we just did. What I do want to do now is I want to install a variety of dependencies for this project. So I'm going to say npm install. I'm going to say express for express framework, body parser. So that way we can accept JSON request bodies. Uh, and I'm also going to say I want Mongoose, which is going to be our ODM for working with Mongo. Um, so this will allow us to have all of our object mappings to interact directly with the database. It's not required, but it definitely does make life easier when working with Mongo in Node. I'm going to say hyphen hyphen save. All right, I am going to install one more dependency. This time it's going to be a development dependency. I'm going to say npm install nodemon hyphen hyphen save dev. Um, and nodemon, if you're unfamiliar, is just kind of like a hot reload service. So that way it'll restart our application every time we hit the save button. Um, because otherwise, you know what, it could get a little, a little annoying. So the dependencies are installed and available to us. Uh, we, we have a few more files in our project. We're going to go ahead and create one more. I'm going to call it app.js. And I'm going to open this project in an editor. Um, I'm going to be using Atom by GitHub, but it really doesn't matter what you use, uh, whatever your preference is. I'm going to go to app.js. And uh, let me zoom in a bit. And we're going to start adding some code here. Uh, so the first the first bit of code is we're gonna we're gonna import the dependencies that we just downloaded. So I'm gonna say constant, and I'm gonna say express equals require express constant body parser equals require body parser constant mongoose equals require mongoose, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set up the um, the node mon as well. So I'll go to my package.json. We'll create a script for it. Uh, I'm going to call this start. That's going to be the name of our script. I'm going to say node mon and I'm going to point node mon at app.js. So that way when we say npm start, it's going to run this script. Um, and we can actually demo that now. I'm going to just say npm start. And you can see that it's watching. There's nothing really for it to run, but it will go ahead and restart every time I make a change. Now heading back into the app.js file, this is where we're going to start adding the rest of our logic. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to say uh, var app equals express. So I'm going to initialize express. I'm going to set up the body parser. So I'm going to say app.use body parser dot json. Um, I'm also going to say that I want URL encoded data. So I'm going to say app.use body parser dot URL encoded extended true. And then I'm going to start serving this application. So I'm going to say app.listen port 3000. And then what happens when it's serving is we're just going to print out a message. So we're going to say console.log. And I'm going to say, you know what, listening at 
port 3000. Doesn't really matter what we put. So this is all really just boilerplate code. Um, what we want to do is we want to connect to that running instance of MongoDB. Um, so I'm going to use mongoose, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say mongoose dot connect. I'm going to provide it my URI. So the URI is going to be MongoDB localhost because even though I am using Docker, I, I have mapped my ports. Um, you could be running this vanilla on your operating system. You could be using Docker. You could be using some remote service. Doesn't really matter. Whatever works best for you. Uh, but mine is going to be running locally. And I'm going to say the database. The database that we're going to be using on in my circumstance that I've set up is going to be the Polyglot Developer. Um, so that'll go ahead and connect to MongoDB uh, when we are ready to start using it. So before we start generating API endpoints, we need to define our document model. So we need to define what our documents are going to look like. Um, and we're only going to have one document. This is going to be a very simple example. Um, but it should prove the point that, hey, you could do some more complicated things as you progress. Um, so our, our document is going to just be a person model. So we're going to say constant person model, which is just coincidence that we've named it that, named it that is mongoose dot model we're going to provide it a name uh, this will be person and we're going to provide it um, the kind of structure um, so we're going to have a last name that's going to be of type string we're going to have a first name that's going to be of type string doesn't really matter the order um, I'm going to save it and that's our very simple model and it could be very very much uh, more complex than that you could have objects in there uh, you could have multiple models they could be connected in some fashion, uh, whatever you can think of. So we have our simple model. Uh, now we need to start worrying about, well, what do our endpoints look like? I do already have data in my database, uh, but let's just go ahead and assume that we don't have data uh, in there as of right now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create my first endpoint. It's going to be a post endpoint. Post generally means create. Uh, we're going to be using uh, full CRUD. So we're going to do create, retrieve, update, and delete. Um, so the first one being create, so we're going to say app.post. We're going to provide the endpoint, which in this case, let's go ahead and call it person because that makes sense. We're going to be creating one single person. Um, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be making use of async and await uh, because, you know what, Mongo works with promises. I personally am not a fan of working with promises. It, I think that it's just as bad as working with callbacks. Um, so this makes it a little, our life a little easier. It's, it's part of modern JavaScript. So I'm going to say async. I'm going to say request, response, next, because that's what uh, Express Framework anticipates. And this is where we start getting into our MongoDB. So we're going to say try. We're going to say var person equals new person model. And we're going to pass in the request body. And you'll notice we aren't going to be doing any kind of validation in this particular example. Uh, we're going to be just passing in whatever data we receive. Our model is going to do some very basic kind of validation. So if, if we start providing properties that don't exist in this model, it's not going to be included. But it's not going to be like validating for, you know what, is our username long enough? Or does our password have certain characters? Uh, the model is not going to validate for that. You're going to need some kind of third-party library, or you're going to need to implement it yourself if you want uh, that level of validation, which you should in a realistic application. We're going to have var result equals await person dot save, and then we're just going to return whatever that result is. So we're going to say res uh, response dot send result. Uh, if there was an error at any point in this, we're going to catch it. So we're going to say catch error and you know what we'll just say response dot status because it's not a 200 error or a 200 response it's going to be a let's say 500 response send um, and then we're going to say error uh, so that's our first endpoint um, and i can go back to my terminal um, it looks like we have an error in here uh, let's see what we have here current url string parser is deprecated i don't think that's the problem here let me let me just try to restart
So the problem wasn't really with our code. I took a second to look at it. Uh, the problem was actually with my Docker container deployment. So I did an invalid port mapping, uh, which caused us all kinds of connection errors. Uh, but that's fixed now. So the code, the code didn't have any problems. Um, so what we can do is we can go to Postman now and we can start creating our request. So the request being, uh, you know, this is a post request um, to the person endpoint. We're doing a JSON body. I'm going to go to say first name and last name, and I'm going to hit send. And you can see the response was that object that we saved. So it's going to have the first name and last name information, but it's also going to have kind of meta information about the, the document. Uh, so for example, it's going to have an ID, uh, which is going to be valuable for us in uh, one of the next steps. But before we get to that next step uh, where the ID is necessary, let's go ahead and work on an endpoint for retrieving all documents. Um, so let's go to app, uh, actually not go to app. We're gonna say app.get. This is gonna be a retrieval endpoint. So I'm gonna say people, plural, uh, because we plan to retrieve more than one. Um, again, this is gonna be async. So I'm gonna say request, response, Next, I'm going to say try. We're going to say var result equals await, and then we're going to do our query here. So we're going to say person model dot find dot execute. Um, so by not providing any kind of uh, option parameters inside the find method, that means we're going to just return all documents from within the person model. Um, if I wanted to do a, a more specific query, I could, of course, provide a query kind of parameters. I'm going to say response.send, and I'm going to send that result. Otherwise, I'm going to catch the error, and I'm going to send that instead. So I'm going to say response.status. This could be a 500 error, and I'm going to say send error. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and check this out now. So I'm going to go back to Postman. Um, I'm going to change the endpoint. This is going to be a uh, get endpoint. But you know what? Actually, before I do that, let's add one more document. I'm going to say uh, Nick Raboy. I'm going to change this to a get endpoint. Uh, this is going to be people with no parameters. Uh, the body isn't important. This won't get sent over. Uh, but I'm going to say send. And you can see that it now returned an array of documents. So everything that exists inside of that person model or that uh, person collection. So we have two documents being returned now. Now we can work towards getting a particular document by the ID. Uh, so again, this is part of the retrieval process. So I'm going to say app.get. This time I'm going to say person, singular, because we only want to get one. I'm going to say ID as the, as the route parameter, also known as the URL parameter. This is going to be async, request, response, next. We're going to have a try catch block again. Inside the try, I'm going to say var person equals await. I'm going to say person model dot. Um, and I could go ahead and do a find and then uh, add my parameters in there. But I'm going to say find by ID. I'm going to specify here. This is part of Mongoose. Um, and for the ID that I'm going to find, it's going to be request dot params dot ID because I, I named it ID here, so I'm going to be using it as ID in there. And I'm going to execute, and I'm going to return the response. So response.send, and I'm going to return person. Otherwise, we're just going to catch it and return that instead. So let's go ahead and sample it. I'm going to go back to Postman. I'm going to specify that I want this ID. I'm going to change the get endpoint person. I'm going to pass in the ID, and hopefully we get one record back. And we did. Uh, so it's no longer an array. It's just a single document, um, and it's that one based on the ID. Perfect. Uh, the next endpoint that we have is going to be for updating. Um, so this is going to be uh, a put endpoint, because that's typically for, for updates. So I'm going to say app.put. This is going to be person uh, because we're going to update one document. We're going to update it by the ID, async, request, response, next. 
And we're going to follow the same trend that we've been doing. So first we're going to say var person. Actually, we're going to do try catch. Response dot status 500 send error. Um, and on success, we're going to say var person equals await. And believe me, if you haven't played around with await and async yet, and you're still using promises, uh, give it a try because this has definitely made my life a little easier. Uh, hopefully it does to you as well. So await person model. So the first step is we need to query for that particular document. Then we need to make the change and then we need to save it. Um, and there are shortcut commands in Mongoose. We're not going to worry about the shortcuts. Uh, we're going to just see how it is kind of laid out and not condensed. So we're going to say find by ID like we did previously, request dot params dot id we're going to execute when we have that result we're going to say person dot set and we're going to say request dot body um, so by saying person dot set what we're saying is you know what anything that appears in the request uh, body object replace it in the person object that was retrieved uh, so for example if the body only has a first name but the saved document has a first name and a last name, well, the last name is still going to persist because it, it still exists. It's, it's only going to replace the first name. Um, and likewise, if, if there's missing fields as well. But I did a person.set, and I can do uh, a save now. So I'm going to say var result equals await person.save. And I can return the response. So response dot send result and let's go ahead and sample it so I'm gonna to go to postman I'm gonna change this to put I still have my ID in there instead of uh, my short name I'm gonna say Nicholas and I'm gonna say send saved it I can go back to say maybe our, our get endpoint I'll pull from the history here send and you can see that we still have two documents here uh, but one of them has an edited uh, first name uh, because that's what we just accomplished. Perfect. So we've got one endpoint left. This is for delete. So I'm going to say app.delete. And we're going to follow the same strategy here. We're going to say person, uh, have a, a route parameter of ID. Uh, we're going to have async, request, response, next. And I have the same old uh, try catch block, so I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste it and remove uh, the inside here. Uh, so inside the try, what we're gonna say var result equals await person model dot delete one, and this is where we provide our query for deletion. Um, so we're gonna look at the ID, and we're gonna pass in an ID request dot params dot id then we're going to execute it and we're going to say response dot send result um, so in theory uh, we could we could delete by a different factor maybe we wanted to delete by first name um, but the, at the end of the day it's only going to delete one item not multiples um, and in theory we only have one id because ids should be unique um, so i saved it i'm going to go back to postman I'm going to say, you know what, let's go ahead and delete my record here. I'm going to copy the ID. I'm going to go to delete. I'm going to change this to person. Paste that in. Hit delete. It says it's deleted. Go back to my query here. And I only have one record now in the array because that's I only have one document in the database for that particular collection. Um, so. We do have full CRUD for a particular collection in MongoDB. Uh, like I said previously, there was a hiccup because I had uh, Im improperly deployed Mongo, um, but we corrected that. Um, so you can see that we have create, retrieve, update, and delete for our endpoints. Uh, if you didn't see the previous tutorial that I did uh, with, with Docker, I definitely recommend that you take a look at it.